Kings chapter 1 as you're going there. I want to read for you Jeremiah 29 and 11. How many of you can tell me today what Jeremiah 29 and 11 says? Half of you in this room can tell me that Jeremiah 29 and 11, that the Lord said, For I know what? The thoughts that I think towards you. He knows what he's thinking towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you what? A future and a hope. Now, we also know that God was speaking this to a group of people. He wasn't speaking this to an individual. He was speaking this to the children of Israel. Nonetheless, it was God's reminder to tell us, I'm thinking thoughts towards you. Everybody in this room, if you can comprehend just for a moment that right now God is thinking thoughts about you. God is thinking about you. And his thoughts are like this, thoughts of peace and not of evil. It breaks my heart when people go through bad things and they blame it on God. God it's not God's fault that bad things happen to you in a sinful world. You live in a sinful world. You're part of a sinful world. You're part of a world where the enemy controls the atmosphere. He's been given the power in in places. and, And so why be surprised that bad things happen on a sinful planet? But it breaks my heart when we blame God for this stuff. And maybe somebody's watching or here today. You've been through that. It's not God's fault because God's thoughts towards you is of peace and not of evil. God's thoughts towards you is to give you a future and a hope. I say all that to tell you this, that God has a destiny for you. And it is time for you to rise to meet your destiny. Now, let me go ahead and get this out of the way. Some of you are sick about hearing the word destiny. And I can't. I can't agree with you more. People writing books about it, selling books by the millions, and they need you to buy their, their, their series of books to be able to tell you how to reach your destiny. That, that, that's a load of garbage. Amen. Can I just be honest with you? And some, somebody's like, I'm reading that book right now. <laughs> it's a good book, don't get me wrong, but you don't need to read that whole book to find out that God has a destiny for you. Because he wants to give you a future. He wants to give you a hope. And it is God's desire to give you a future and a hope. But God cannot force his future and his hope upon you. He won't force it upon you. But he has a plan for your life. Now, let me go ahead and get this out of the way so I can say it 15 more times in this sermon. People people say to me, how do I know my purpose? How do I get to my destiny? I will not ask you to read 14 books to find your destiny. If I'm looking to find a place in Florida, I don't need 14 books. I need one, and it's called an atlas. And we really don't even need that anymore. We need GPS. You just turn on your phone, and you talk to that lady named Siri. Uh, you know, she's, she's able to talk to everybody on the planet at the same time. Somehow, I don't know how she does that. But to get some, now notice this, to get somewhere, you need one book. You need an atlas. Now, if you're like, I'm picking on you guys today. If you're like Pastor Sheldon Amber, your atlas is from 1988. <laughs> a couple years ago, we bought them an atlas for Christmas because theirs was like 12 years old. It's like, guys, they've, they've dug a few roads since then. Because <laughs> every time they went somewhere, it's like, man, we got lost again. <laughs> I wonder why. But I want you to understand In order to get to your destiny, here's what I feel you must do. Here's what I feel you need to do. And most of you heard me say this. Everyday obedience will get you to your destiny. Everyday obedience will get you to your destiny. That didn't cost you $29.99. It didn't, it didn't require you to read, read a book that would take a month to read. I'm telling you that everyday obedience will get you to your destiny. Let, let, me, let me take you there. Ephesians 1, verses 4 and 5, and then we'll read verse 11. Verses 4 and 5. Just as He chose us. Amen. He chose us. In Him before what? The foundation of the world. You guys preaching with me today? That we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. Can I pause there just for a You guys already know I can't read without pausing. The Word of God, it just, it, it, it's so good. It's a life changer, just in case if you don't know. The, verse number 4 says that He chose us. We didn't choose Him. If you're sitting here today, it's because Jesus Christ chose you. 
Somebody, you know, we, we, we hear the preaching and the songs. You know, I, I, I found Jesus. He, he didn't get lost. You didn't have to go find him. We are the ones that get lost. We are the ones that lose our way. But it says that he chose us in verse 4, that he, he chose us. And not only did he choose us, here's how I know you have a destiny. He chose us before the foundation of the world. Going back to Jeremiah, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined. You know what that word predestined means? It means that there was a predetermined outcourse, a predetermined thought that God had already put a plan in place. How many of you know that before everything happened, Jesus was part of the plan? Before everything happened, whether you know it or not, in the, in the month of August 2016, it was already part of the plan that you would be here today. Today. I also want to tell you that it was part of the plan that other people would be here, but they did not heed to the plan. Before the foundations at night, if you guys can comprehend this, you're better than I am because God is, God is much more above my ability to think and process. Before the foundations of the world, he already predestined, but here's what he predestined. He didn't predestine according to your ability to win the lottery. He didn't predestine according to your ability to get a husband or a wife. He did not predestine according to your mood this morning or my mood. He predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. You see, here is where we mess up. Anybody want to know where we mess up? Yeah. So many times I've heard people say, and I have to be careful here because I've had some of these conversations lately. I've heard people say, well, I, I, I believe I feel like the Lord telling me to do that. Then don't do it. Amen. Then don't do it. Amen. I need you to tell me I am persuaded. Do you know how many people lose their blessing because of their emotion? Well, it, 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 it seems good, and God wouldn't, God wouldn't give me a good thing if it wasn't a blessing. Jeff Willis told me something probably 11 years ago, sitting on a roof putting on shingles. He said, just because it looks like a blessing doesn't mean it is a blessing. Just because it looks like a blessing. But, y'all still with me? But he predestines us. According to the good pleasure of His will. I have a news flash that for some of you will excite you and for some of you it might create a bad day. You were born not for your own good will. You were born not for your own good pleasure. You were born for the good pleasure of your Father. You were born to give Him good pleasure according to the counsel of His will. Now, Pastor Josh... I was born so that the world could get a gift. <laughs> now, Pastor Josh, I, I was born because God knew how great I was. And God, God put me in this group of people because he knew how special I was. That group knows you're special. You just don't know what kind of special they know you is. <laughs> I'm trying to lighten the moment so I can pull you in. And a sucker punch you. I just have to get you to the point where you understand that when you were conceived and born and the breath of life given into you, you're sitting here today and it is not because of your will. It is not because of everything God wants to give you that you are here. You are here for one purpose and that is for his purpose and his good counsel and his everything that is about you right now is about him and everything that is about him is about you if you're sitting here this morning i think i said this in the last couple of weeks the reason so many church services go wrong and so many people's lives go wrong is we make this life about us 
I'm not happy. I don't like this. I don't like that. God didn't create you. Yes, he wants to love you. Yes, he wants you to be blessed. Yes, he wants you to be favored. But he did not create you so that everything could be about you. That is not why you were created, so that God and everybody else could revolve around you. Your purpose and your destiny must be Christ-led and not emotion-led. I have a destiny. I, I, I got to move. Verse 11. In him also we have obtained inheritance. I like that. Being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. I, I, I think God is good. And God wants to do great things in our lives. Let me read this. I already read verse 11 to you, didn't I? Look at that. You're welcome. <laughs> Romans 8, look at this one on the screen with me, 8, 29, and 30. For whom he foreknew, that means he already knew you. He, know, he knows you. For those of you right now that don't have babies and you're going to have a baby, the Lord knew that baby before you had that baby. The Lord knew that baby before you had that baby. That baby belonged to him before it belonged to you. And even though it belongs to you now, it belonged to him before it belongs to you. That means there's a rightful owner to that baby. I'll move on. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. There's another part of his purpose and his plan. You weren't put on the, on the planet just to get a tan. You were put on the planet... To be conformed to the image. I'm sorry. You guys again right there. I'll tell you. Right right here on the front row. The, these people who just got off the beach with a tan. Uh, I don't know. It just, it's just going to. Maybe today's a fun day. I don't know. <laughs> to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, he also called. If God looked down... The portals of time, and he knew that he was predestining, uh, predestined you for greatness. That means that you, when you were born, this is why it is important that we dedicate children back to the Lord. Whenever, whenever they're crying at night at 3 a.m. in the morning, you don't even know that God has already predestine them to be the next Catherine Coleman, to be the next Billy Graham. God has already called, and whom he called, he justified. That means that he's already declared them to be righteous. And whom he, he justified, these also he glorified. To be and to be conformed into the image of the Son of God. Church, I, I read all of that so that I could tell you that you need to rise to meet your... That there is a destiny. It is... It is proven in Scripture. It is proven in Scripture that before you could talk, God had a plan for your life. Now, let me break this down for you. People say to me, well, if God had a plan for my life, I wouldn't be in this mess. <laughs> Two points on that. Number one, sometimes your mess has nothing to do with God. Just because we make bad decisions doesn't mean that those bad decisions were part of God's plan. That's number one. Number two, sometimes the bad stuff in your life is exactly where God wants you to be. Sometimes hurt and grief and brokenness sometimes is your fault. But there are those times where God allows those things to occur, and it is part of God's plan to get you to a better place. You see, when your company tells you that they don't need you anymore, your world crumbles, but God is saying, I've got a plan. I've got a plan to get you another job. When you lose one relationship and you think that the world has come to an end, God may be sitting in heaven saying, this is part of my plan to get you out of that one to get you in another one. Uh, but your heart is broken. Sometimes, sometimes death is part of God's plans. Sometimes you getting fired is part of God's plans. Sometimes bad things happening in your life is part of God's plan. You can't see it right now, but God is stretching you to get you ready for the destiny that he has for your life. And you're, you're telling God, you're saying, Lord, 
Lord, I cannot handle this darkness anymore. And God is saying, if you will just hold on a little longer, I'm about to turn a light on in your darkness. What you, re- what you don't realize is your darkness right now is God setting you up for the kingdom. Pastor Josh, it doesn't make sense that I would have to go through bad things to get where God wants me to be. Go ahead and try to tell that to Joseph. Who would have known being abandoned by your entire family would be part of God's plan? Who would have known receiving a false accusation that would cast you into prison would be part of God's plan? Am I preaching to anybody today? But the Bible says in Joseph's story that the Lord never left him, that the Lord always had, that God, even in the prison, God was there. Even in the cell, God was there. Even in the pit when his brothers were making fun of him, God was Can I tell somebody in this room, in order for God to get you to the position that he wants for you, He's got to let you go through the pit and the prison to get you to the mountaintop. Sometimes the path for your destiny is uglier than other people's paths. Can I get an amen? Amen. But there is a purpose to it. If you are every day obeying God's plan for your life, I'll promise you, you'll get to your destiny. How many people in this room ended up somewhere and it surprised you it it, it is i can't i can't believe that all of that got me here anybody anybody a witness to that i can't believe that all of that got and and can can you say but god God. that's all uh, but but how 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 can that but god i thought my world was coming to an end i lost my home and, and here i am a couple years later, better than, but God. I thought, I thought I'd never get over that. I lost this job, lost all this money, and, and had to, had, but God. But God. There's people in this room right now, I won't point them out, because I'm nice. There's people in this room that God, God took their job to save their life. They're here today because God took their job. Had God not taken their job, they'd be dead. Yeah. Heart attack, blood pressure. Can I get an amen? amen. Some of, somebody, see, the people that, that, that I'm talking to, they, they, they know. Yeah. That, you, know you see them like this. Oh. <laughs> people have lost relationships that at, at one point you thought to yourself, oh, you know, this, this is just, it's going to crumble. Some, sometimes God moves you out of one church to another church, and you just think my world's come to an end. And God is saying, I know my thoughts for you. Don't doubt my thoughts for you. Don't doubt that I've got a thought of of a future and a hope. Don't doubt that I'm raising you to your destiny. I'm bringing you there. Are you obeying God every day to get to that final destiny? There's a reason today that the air conditioner is not working exactly the way that it should. There's a reason that it's extra humid today. I don't know why, but God has a destiny. Has anybody ever had a car break down and you find out it was actually a blessing? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever, have you, has this father ever gotten mad or this husband ever gotten angry? Because if, if there's one thing I hate, I hate being late. I don't do late, man. And if you show up on time, you're late. If you're supposed to be somewhere at 10, 15, you need to be here at least 5 or 10 minutes early. That way at 10, 15, you're in place, ready to go. If you're on time, you're late. I don't like late. And all, everybody, all right. All right. Everybody's like, are we supposed to clap right now? Like, <coughs> and my, my wife, she's like, two minutes. Because I know two means four. Every, in moments like that, you know, you, brother, brother Mike, you got to multiply it. The Lord said He would multiply things, didn't He? Yeah. But there's been those times. There's been those times where things have happened. You guys know what I'm talking about. Things have happened, and, I, and I'm just, I'm just like, you know, got, got to go, got to. Go. And all of a sudden, you get down the road and you see a wreck. You see, and, and you realize that 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 not be. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. All right. 
I got, I got to join everybody else. <laughs> this humidity, man. Pastor Roy, he said, the air conditioner's on. I'm like, no, it ain't, brother. <laughs> He's like, it's on. It's just too humid. I want to tell you guys a story. Before I tell you the person of the story, I'm going to tell it as brief as I can, but I, I, I just want to paint you more than yell and scream and, and jump pews and all that today. I want you to leave this place today knowing that God has a destiny for your life. And can I tell you that contrary to popular belief, you won't always have a group of people standing by your side singing, follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> Wouldn't life be so much easier if there were these signs that said, hey, make sure you go this way. Hey, make sure you're friends with this person. Hey, make sure you go to that church. Hey, hey, I know, I know she's beautiful, but that ain't the one. Close your eyes and feel your spirit. Don't marry it. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great if life had those signs? Wouldn't it be great, young people, if life said, make sure you take this in college? Wouldn't it? I mean, life would be so much easier, but it's not that way. You close your eyes and you're looking for a, a group of people to be singing. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow. And it's like. And you never find it. Yeah. Like, where are they at? Yeah. And you pray. How many of you have prayed, God, I, God if you just speak to me, yeah. then I'll follow the path that you have for me. Yeah. And how many of you have ever gotten up from prayer and not gotten an answer? Yeah. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Sometimes the Lord will cause you to trust in his word. Yeah. Friends, can I tell you, God will not always come down and speak prophetically, you know, people come to church, man, I hope somebody lays hands on me today and just tells me. Yeah. So who, who, who today, don't raise your hand, who today walked into this place and you're thinking, i got to make this decision? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this. And how many of you know what I'm talking about? I look back over the last 20 years, 30 years, I'm 39 now, and it's like, how did I get yeah. here? My, my path didn't say that I was going to get here. But here we are. Amen. Here you are. Yeah. Some of you sitting in here this morning, it's like, how in the world did you end up in church, number one? Amen. Isn't, it ama isn't it amazing that the whole roof falling in thing is just a hoax? Isn't, isn't that funny? Isn't that funny, Jim Toothman? Isn't that funny that, that it's just a hoax, that the roof doesn't cave in just because you, just because you came in? There's a girl in the Bible. She's born. And after she's born, she loses her parents. Mm -hmm. Now, see, when something like that happens, you're already thinking, my destiny's broken. Yeah. She loses her parents. She's an orphan Jew. She has, she has nobody. So she ends up having to be adopted. See, now let me talk to some of you. Get to your heart. So she has to be adopted. And, you know... We automatically think that if you're adopted, you know, life is already going to be tougher. We don't oftentimes think that sometimes the best thing in life for us is that we could be adopted. Sometimes the best thing in life for us is that we didn't stay on the path that we were on. But this, this, this little Jewish girl, adopted by a cousin, goes through life not having parents because some of you have that and I don't know why I'm going back to this. Sometimes if we don't have those certain people in our lives, we already, we already determine life can't be normal because I don't have this. When you forget that regardless of what you do and don't have, it is His will, it is His purpose, it is not based upon the circumstances of planet Earth. Come on now. Destiny is not based upon the circumstances of planet Earth. My destiny cannot be broken by the things of this planet because my inheritance and my plan is not written on this planet. It is written by God Almighty in heaven. Therefore, the, thing, the only thing that can mess up my destiny is me. 
You mean I can't, I can't even blame the other 14 people that got in my way? No, you cannot. Because it is not their fault that you did not listen to God. It is not their fault that you did not obey God. So when you miss your destiny, all you can do is look in the mirror and say, better luck next time. Get back on the path. It doesn't mean life is over. It means, may- and come on, how many of us have missed the boat? We, we've missed it before. We, we did think, I got that one wrong. I got that. Man, I really thought that was God. How many of you have ever, I thought that was God. How many of you ever been fooled before? Amen. Come on, the rest of you, need, if the rest of you can repent later if you didn't say amen right there. Amen. We've been fooled, man. This girl adopted, you guys know her. By her name of Esther, meaning star. She was known as Hadessa. And <clears throat> most people believe that when Mordecai adopted her, that they changed her name from Hadessa to Esther. And she grows up without parents. She grows up without, you know, people sitting in here today and, and we think about inheritance we think about mom and dad's will we think about what I can you know what, what I'm going to get and different things like that she didn't have any of that because she didn't have parents and it's always funny to me that no matter where we go God's people always have a star on their back God's people have always got somebody out looking for them so so he, here, here's the story I, I've never 20 years preaching I've never preached on Esther before ever because my when I was talking to my wife about it this week, she's like, uh, she's like, that's such a chick flick. <laughs> <clears throat> like, that's probably why I've never preached on it. One night with the king. With the king. Such a chick flick. And I, I told her, it's going to be a funny day, people. Let's just be funny. I told her, I said, I cannot. <laughs> Dylan, I said, I cannot read Esther, cannot preach on Esther without thinking about Veggie Tales. Come on, parents and grandparents. What was, what was it you said last night? Did you call me a gnat? <laughs> see? You see? <laughs> Glory, preacher. Preach on, preacher. <clears throat> so all of a sudden, do you think that God's plan would cause a king to banish his own queen. The king banishes his queen, therefore he needs a new queen. So they call and they go out in all of the land and they are going to bring in all the young women, all the women who haven't been married before, they're, they're, they're pure, and, and, and get this. Now, imagine that all of the toughest things you go through in your life and the strangest things is part of God's plan. <clears throat> So Esther is pulled in. The Bible says that Esther is beautiful in her countenance. Do you know that some people, not all, but some people are born with a specific look because part of your plan is how you look? People say, Pastor Josh, that is not true. It doesn't make sense. The Bible says that Esther is beautiful, and she would not have been chosen by the king nor the king's men had she not looked beautiful. God had a plan in place. And Esther is chosen among all of these other women. Esther, Esther is chosen, and the Bible says that they have to, they have to uh, present themselves. They have to take a year, yes. a full year, yes. to prepare themselves for one night with the king. Wow. Yeah. You mean I've got to sit in this palace? Drinking the finest of drinks, eating the finest of foods, but I'm away from my family doesn't make. I gotta, I gotta prepare myself for a full year, for one opportunity to impress some guy that I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> and that's what she did. She prepared all of these. Think about it now. All these women, however many hundreds or thousands of women, preparing themselves for a year. For one opportunity to go before the king. Esther gets her opportunity. She goes before the king. And guess what? Surprise, surprise. An orphan is chosen as the next queen. Good things can happen to orphans. Good things can happen to orphans. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean it was part of God's plan that I was orphaned? I like when you guys get quiet sometimes. 
Let me speed through the story. She becomes queen. And all of a sudden, the king puts this other guy as his number two in command. His name is Haman. Haman, Haman gets this com- complex, you know, it's like I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the man. I, I'm, I'm the number two. Everybody's got to I, I don't like those kind of leaders, you know. It's just like, you know, respect my authority kind of thing. I, 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 don't, I don't deal with that very well. Uh, and you would get fired if you were part of my staff. But <laughs> Haman, Haman was going through, and he was making everybody bow. And here's Mordecai. Mordecai, ba- Mordecai basically says, I, b- I bow to nobody except my God and my king. So Haman gets this hatred, but he gets a hatred against all of the Jews because Mordecai was a Jew. So Haman, Haman goes to the king. For you guys that don't know the story and have never watched Veggie Tales, Haman goes to the king, and he puts a, a plot together to kill every Jew. Sound familiar? Yeah. To kill every Jew, hey, Haman goes to the king, and the king agrees because, you see, because devils can paint a picture... And I I hate the gift of manipulation. Haman manipulated the king and said, these people, they're against you. They've got their own laws. They've got their own rules. And therefore, we need to get rid of them. So they they put out a a decree decree that on this day, on a certain month, that all the Jews would be killed. What they did not realize is Mordecai heard the voice of God one day and told Esther, when you get in there, whether you're chosen or not, I feel that I need to tell you, do not tell them what your race is. This is a good story. And so all of a sudden, Haman says, we're going to kill every Jew. You guys, you guys are like story time, all right? Pull, pull your chair up. And Mordecai begins to pray and, and rent his clothes, and he's got sackcloth and ashes, and half of you know, don't have a clue what sackcloth and ashes, ashes mean. You need to go home and read that in your own time. And so all of a sudden, Mordecai says, the only hope for the Jews is Esther. The orphan girl who prepared for a year, who doesn't have a mother and doesn't have a father, you mean to tell me that it could be up to this one woman to save an entire nation? You mean her destiny could have been planned and part of her destiny had to be the removal of one queen so that an orphan girl could get before the king and become the queen just to save all. You mean God would do all of that for a woman's destiny just to say God would go through all of that for one person and an entire nation? So Mordecai says, Esther, you've got to go before the king. You've got to tell the king, now is the time to relinquish your identity. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There are moments and time to relinquish your identity. I don't want to dwell there very long. There are moments and times. It's not meant every day for you to tell everybody what you've been through. It's not meant that every day that you would open up your, sh- your shirt and have, you know, super Christian. Ri- it's, that's not meant for every day. It's not meant for every, every person that you come to that you tell them that you're an orphan, that you tell them that you filed bankruptcy, that you tell them that you have lost four children, that, that, that you tell them that you've lost a marriage, that you, that you tell them that your children have abandoned you and they've rebelled against you. It, it's not for every person to know, but there's a moment in your destiny that the road you have traveled is meant so it can be a blessing to somebody else. My good God Almighty, sometimes your path, sometimes your road to destiny is so that you can lead other people to Christ and let other people know that even in your brokenness, if God did it in me, he'll do it in you. And do not despise those things. Do not despise small beginnings. I might have started out broke. I might have started out poor. I might have started off adopted. I might have started off chapter 11. I might have started off divorced. I might have started off with, 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 with losing my children. I've had mothers tell me how they lost their children. And, and they look back and, man, I wish I could do things different. But sometimes God's got a plan that doesn't make sense to you. And God is saying, don't hate small beginnings. It's just part of my plan. All of it is part of my plan. 
Let me finish this. So Esther, Esther says, I can't go before the king. If I just go uh, unbenounced, I'll be killed. Even the queen, if you go to the king uninvited, you'll be killed. Mordecai said these words. Write this down, please. Esther 4, 13 and 14. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent, listen to that, at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen. Esther chapter 4, verses 13 and 4. Who knows, Esther, <clears throat> if everything that had happened was not for the purpose of you being in the kingdom for this very moment. Can I tell you today, who knows that all the hell that you've been through wasn't part of God's plan so that you could be in this place on this day just to be reminded that although it has been dark and although it has been messy, that God has got you exactly where he wants you. And your obedience will continue to be the key that God will use to bring... Listen, you mean, that, you mean that part of my plan is I've got to go through all this stuff and maybe if I go through all this stuff that God will use my life. Esther went before the king and the king gave her favor. Why, why, would, why, why all of a sudden would the king give her favor? Because she had favor in the sight of God and in the sight of man. You see... If you're willing to be obedient in the hard times, you'll find you'll find just unbeknownst blessing in the good time. You 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 you'll find it odd and, and and unbelievable what God will do for you and to you and through you in good. And, and you just sit back and say, God, it, it makes no sense that you're doing this for me. And God is still saying, I have got a plan, and you are rising to your destiny. It won't rain always, baby. Baby, and there's a day that your blessings come knocking on your door and you go before the king and the king gives you favor. And the king says, what can I do for you? You guys know the story. And, and eventually Esther says, somebody is out to kill me and my people. What do you mean me and my people? For I am a Jew. And all of a sudden, God let years go by and months go by knowing that there was a plot to kill his people. But all of a sudden, a beautiful orphan girl stands up and says, I am a Jew. And the devil in the room, you read it for yourself, the devil in the room began to say, please have mercy on me. I'm I'm telling you this today. If you'll be obedient in the hard things today, there will come a day where the devil in your life will be begging you for mercy. There will come a day in your life where the devil in your life will be looking at all the blessing that you've got. And there will come a day where the devil won't even understand what's going on. And, the, and uh, the Bible says that Haman was begging her. Because Haman didn't know she was a Jew. Haman didn't know that Mordecai had raised her. And the Bible says this. The very gallows that Haman had built for Mordecai. The king had Haman hanged on those very gallows. The destruction meant for you. will sabotage the plan of your enemy. That is why the Word of God says that His angels go before you. And His angels won't even allow your foot to be dashed against the stone. My feet won't even be bruised against... That, that's what that means. My feet won't even be bruised on a stone. That's how much God has got your back. That is how much God is looking out for you. That is how much blessing... Do you not realize... Esther 4.14, do you not realize that you have been born and you have come for such a time? 
Esther, do you not realize that all of this could... This is what Mordecai was saying, 2016. Esther, do you not realize now that all of this stuff happened possibly so that you could be sitting where you're sitting now? And because Esther did not run away from her visit with the king because Esther was not stubborn and saying, I'm not putting on perfumes and taking baths and, and do because all because Esther didn't walk into the kingdom complaining, oh, I shouldn't be here because you know I'm adopted. All because Esther was willing to have everyday obedience, God looked down the portals of time and said, I will save my people, and I will save them through a beautiful orphan girl because at the right moment, at the right time, Esther had told all of her people, go back and fast and pray for me. And God said, at the right moment, at the right time, Jeremiah chapter 29 and 11, I have thoughts for you, thoughts of hope and thoughts of peace, thoughts of a future. I will not let you be destroyed but if you obey me I will allow you to rise to your destiny 